what's going on guys please in here welcome back to the channel and it is time for another fusion let me know in the comments down below are you guys ready for this are you, are you guys tired up from fusions should you you know do, do you feel like it's just too much should we should plurium just kind of kick it back a little bit with the fusions because it does feel like the last couple of fusions has just been back to back to back but we did get a little bit of a breather this last time that said uh before i go too far if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, you know, if, if, if you find anything helpful here, give the video a like and subscribe. It really does help me out. That said, let's break down Gretel's skill kit. Now, she does have a partner in crime, Hensel, obviously, Hensel and Gretel. Uh, the A1 has a 50% chance of placing a 60% decreased defense for two turns. Books up to 75% with four books. Not bad. I like it. Um, it is requiring accuracy though, right? If Hensel's on the team, it drops down to a 50% and then it becomes AoE and then you also place an extra hit. Now, I don't know if the extra hit's going to have a chance to place the decreased defense. I have that. Uh, I have asked that question and I'm waiting back for an answer. I would venture to say yes, but I don't know how it's coded, right? So if it is that way, then... Yeah, this becomes a really strong ability. The A2, which I really, really love, attacks one enemy four times, so it's a quad hitter. Now, you might be thinking Fire Knight, but I don't think so. The first hit will ignore 10% of the target's defense. Second hit will ignore 15. Third hit will ignore 20. And then the last one, the fourth one, will ignore 25. If the attack kills an enemy, resets the cooldown of this skill and fills this champion's turn meter. So she resets her own skills if she kills somebody, which with a four hitter, if the multiplier is decent and she's got about, I don't know, 1500 attack, as long as it's like a, a 1.9, maybe a 2.5 multiplier, uh, it's going to be pretty strong, right? And it can definitely do some damage. So she, and that's on a three turn cooldown. So she's going to be able to kill somebody, reset her cooldown. And give herself 50% turn meter boost, which means she's going to go, again, almost instantaneously. The A3 attacks all enemy, decreases the turn meter of all enemies by 25%. The only part I don't like here is that, again, it requires accuracy. Because the next part of the skill kits here says, if Hensel the Wind Charger is on the same team, decreases the turn meter of all allies by 50%, then, right? So this is definitely a PvP move. Uh, this cannot be resisted. Not going to work towards bosses, obviously. Then fills this champion's turn meter by 20% for each enemy alive after the attack. The way I read this, it sounds like she's going to have a pretty strong multiplier. Or at least I'm hoping. Because they want her to go again. So, or at least they're putting in the condition that she'll be able to boost her turn meter back up again. On a 3 turn cooldown, so between the A2 and the A3... It's almost guaranteed that she's going to go again, <laughs> right? Uh, let's talk about the passive. Fills the champion's turn meter by 50% whenever an enemy is granted an extra turn. So if a Rotos keeps procking off the A1s, right? That's going to come in for you. That's going to work better for you. Merciless sets, right? Relentless sets, those kind of things are going to trigger this. If Hensel is on the same team, also fills their turn meter by 50% whenever an enemy grant is granted an extra turn. And then the last part is if Hensel is on the team instant, uh, and dies, instantly activates Sacred Ritual, which is the A2 or the A3, sorry. So she'll decrease the turn meter of all enemies, increase her turn meter, and then, you know, AoE nuke everybody down. Overall, I think this fusion looks strong, depending what the multipliers are. I would go ahead and venture and say that she is going to be a fusion that everybody's going to be interested in doing i mean the a2 especially being able to quad hit there's not a lot of champions that do multiple hits i think basilius Rohanus is one of them that deals with rotos but i think you know inquisitor shamel is another one that has like a triple hitter on the a3 and hits pretty hard so i'm excited for this and i think that it's going to be really solid all right then her partner in crime is hensel uh the a1 attacks one enemy has a 50 percent chance of placing a weaken for two turns if gretel is on the same team basically does what she does which is 
decreases the t uh, down to a 50% chance, grants an extra turn, and then becomes an AoE. Again, pretty solid. This is more of a PvE move because you're not looking to do any sort of debuffs in PvP. Uh, the only exception for him is if they're under debuffs, he places an extra hit. With Gretel is if they have buffs, right? So that's pretty good. Uh, the A2 attacks one enemy two times will ignore shield and stone skin buffs. Grants an extra turn if the target kills an enemy. Looks pretty good. Kind of kind of deal with like Necrits, right? Um, or somewhat because it doesn't ignore uh, strengthen. So there's not a lot of unkillable things going on in Arena at this point in time. Uh, maybe I might be wrong. I, I have fallen out of the meta quite a little bit here. But overall, the A2 seems strong, but nothing crazy, right? I mean, Rotos kind of does the same thing. The A3 attacks all enemies will ignore 15% of the target's defense. Also increases the duration of one random skill by two turns. If Gretel's on the same team, it will be a 30% ignore defense. And then it's going to increase all enemy skills by two turns instead. And this does not require any accuracy. It cannot be resisted. Pretty solid, actually. So you get a Warlord plus a, you know, Nuker type situation here. I like it. The three turn cooldown is actually very solid as well, too. The passive reflects all fear and true fear uh, debuffs from this champion to the attacker. There's not a lot of fears. Like, it's not even going to counter to Ross, to be quite honest. So I don't really know where the fear is coming from. I guess there is a mythical um, Mezamil that puts out fear. But he is spirit. Uh, she is spirit. He's magic. So maybe that's kind of what they're looking to take on here with that. But if they're if if this is their answer to Mezamel, <laughs> it's gonna be quite interesting. Uh, if Gretel's on the same team, reflects all fear and true fears debuffs placed on her. Uh, back to the attacker as well, and then the active effect. If Gretel's on the same team and is killed, basically will activate his A three right so ignoring the defense putting on a big nuke and then locking their skills out so he does seem pretty strong as a standalone champion right ignoring shields unkillables weekend extra hits if his partner in crime is there but is he going to be a must-have to go for uh during the deck of fate events i don't think so i may be i may be wrong but i think if i really had to pick one out of the two i would say Gretel would be the better option that may change as we see in the multipliers uh will i go for both of them of course i do hope that the that the deck of fate event is not gonna gimp us with points again please plarium don't do that people were not happy i won't be happy and i really don't want to make another fu video right who should be going for this fusion and this partnership if you have the shards I would say, or Soul Stones, because we do know that they're going to do it this kind of way. I would say go for both of them. They seem pretty solid. Again, Gretel over Hensel, in my opinion. That quad hitting A2 is pretty strong. Again, pending the <laughs> multipliers. I know I keep saying that, but usually the multipliers for like a, a triple hitter or a quad hitter are like 1.9, 2.5, unless they're a legendary champion, which is uh, not a legendary, um, void champion, which is closer to like. I want to say like three. I think that new uh, champion that came out, the uh, the Void one, is like 3.0. So assuming that that's all done, I think Gretel is going to be a pretty must-do fusion. And this guy, I mean, runner-up. I'll take it if I have it. If not, it is what it is. Obviously, again, myself, I'll probably go for both of them. End game players, I think, will end up using Gretel not Hensel as much because he doesn't bring you know trying to put two nukers in the uh in the team for arena isn't really going to be a, a <laughs> an easy way to kind of do this right uh so mid game late game players again gretel will benefit them uh, might even be functional to use her in like fire knight We'll have to see. Wave clears could actually be something she does, right? Because the A2 uh, or the A3 on the wave clears and then the A2 on the boss. That could work. Although, ideally, you really want a quad hitter on the A1. 
early game accounts i mean if you can do a fusion you do a fusion right uh she seems strong she's very very powerful i feel like i i would give this a double thumbs up and say go for the fusion guys if you can is there anything i would change about them i want to say the passives are good or gretel pencil kind of feels weak source i feel though that if they changed it to maybe ignore stone skin uh that would be really good right that that gives us a, a sit a, a problem to resolve with stone skin as for anything else i really feel like the a1s on both of these champions are good if they're together even if they're standalone but i don't like the fact that you have to build the accuracy because you're not going to be able to build a nuker with like 350 400 accuracy granted we are probably going to be getting either a four star or five star soul for her so there's an automatic accuracy check there that we're going to get 75 accuracy but i don't feel like that was actually helpful <laughs> right um it, it, i think like if they were going to be partners together if since they're going to have them partners together i think the a1s should just not require any accuracy whatsoever especially because the a3 doesn't require accuracy so that's more of an incentive to kind of go for both of them right so i don't know you guys let me know in the comments down below what do you think will you be going for these fusions i am and i know Gretel isn't really a fusion, but will be a deck fate. So kind of the same thing, I guess. I don't know, guys. <laughs> but let me know in the comments down below what you guys be going for. I'm, I'm kind of excited to play with Gretel. I think that A2 is going to be really, really strong. That said, again, if you guys enjoyed the content, if you found anything helpful, make sure you smash that like button up. Consider subscribing to the channel. It does help out a lot. Um, let's me know what you guys are really interested in, right? And if you don't like it, thumbs down the video. It's fine. It's fine. If you don't agree with what I have to say, I have no problem with it. Just tells me what I may have gotten wrong. And if I did get something wrong, put it down in the comments down below. As always, if you guys got some time, make sure to join us on Sunday, 2 p.m. EST for the Nights of Teleria podcast, where we talk everything Raid Shadow Legends. We talk about the good, the bad, the ugly. We will be discussing them this weekend on the Nights of Teleria podcast. And as always, much love, much appreciation. Be safe, be well, be good to each other, and I'll catch you guys next time.